Greetings and salutations. This is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. Please excuse the sweaty look. Uh, I've literally just gone off the treadmill and uh, I'm all, all hot and bothered at the moment. I've had to sit on the floor and lean against the sofa rather than actually sit in the sofa and make it all sweaty because that just won't be very nice at all. Um, so anyway, this is just a personal video log. Uh, I haven't done one in a little while. I'm a bit overdue, so I thought I'd better put uh, a little video together and uh, I'll let you know what's happening in Rickworld. First of all, I want to say a massive thanks for everybody's comments on my previous videos uh, or previous video where I was out in the van and I was basically asking for any ideas or suggestions that I could do uh, for video making because I'm sort of running out of ideas. And um, you guys uh, came up trumps as always and you gave me a massive list. I've now got a big list on my computer. So when I'm in a position to make a video, I can actually look up the list and think, right, ah, yes, I can do that today. Um, I haven't actually made a video for the last couple of weeks. I've been incredibly busy um, with the other channel. Um, as you know, I've got uh, the other channel and uh, that's, that's got the, the higher subscriber base. So it sort of has to take a little bit of a priority. Um, but we've had some kind of cool things happening there, which is really good. And uh, one of the, uh, the UK's top magazines got in touch with us and said uh, we're doing a thing do you want to get involved and we were like yes please so uh, we had to sort of uh, it was all action stations for a, for a week or so while we got various things together um, for that which is quite exciting so that's coming up in a couple of a uh, couple of months so can't say any more about it until then really um, but uh, yeah that's what sort of kept me away from making my videos now we've been having some interesting weather for the last uh, week or so we've had some beautiful days uh, a few days ago i was sat in the garden not a cloud in the sky beautiful warm and blue and sunny and i was sat out there and i did some writing got my little uh, computer out and did a little bit of uh, of writing which is what i like to do as my hobby and uh, i had a nice glass of wine with me as well there's nothing there's nothing helps uh, writer's block than a glass or two of red wine and uh, so I kind of went for it and uh, just had a wonderful day. And then the following day, we had apocalyptical rain. It was incredible. The skies were so dark. I, I Honestly, I've never, ever seen this house plunged into such darkness in the middle of the afternoon. And I actually I had my uh, camera phone with me and uh, I actually took this little bit of footage, which I'll show you now. Hey guys, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. You may have noticed it's quite dark in here. Let me show you the little clock on the cooker. The time is currently half past two in the afternoon. I have never, ever, ever experienced dark clouds like we've got right now. So as you can see, that was pretty dark and the rain that came down was unbelievable. And I know other parts of the country, they have kind of really big, sort of almost golf ball sized hailstones and things. Um, it was pretty impressive. And I have to admit, I am quite a fan of um, rough weather. As long as you're kind of safe and cozy indoors and you can kind of look out at it uh, and just kind of enjoy it. Um, but at one point, the garden looked like it was going to be flooding. It actually, the, the water was pooling at the bottom of the garden and it was starting to creep towards the house. And this was one of those cases where I thought, I hope this doesn't go on too long. Fortunately, uh, it was OK. And, uh, uh, you know, it, everything uh, went fine and I didn't get flooded, which was good. Now, some of the gardeners among you might find this a little bit interesting. Um, I have a, an elderly neighbour who lives over the road and we're often sort of standing out the front of the house and chatting. And um, we got chatting about uh, Chilton Foliat and the Victorian kitchen garden. Now, as you know, when I did my allotments, um, Sean from the Hort Channel came down and we went off in search of the, uh, the, the site of where they made the Victorian kitchen garden, which was a BBC series that uh, uh, went out back in the 80s or 90s. I think it was the 80s, wasn't it? And uh, anyway, we got chatting and uh, she went, went indoors and she came out and she showed me this. 
And this is the actual uh, the book from the series, which is the Victorian Kitchen Garden. And it's signed by uh, Harry Dodson. So hopefully you can see that. Um, there we go, middle of the screen. Uh, that's Harry Dodson's signature. And it turns out that while the series was on, she actually got invited, uh, a very small group of them, uh, by the BBC to go down to the gardens and be guests for the day. And they actually spent some time with Harry and uh, I think they went out for a meal down at uh, the local pub. And uh, she said it was a, a really delightful little uh, little trip. And uh, she was kind of reminiscing all about it and telling us little stories and stuff. And I just thought that was really, really interesting. Now, I've actually tried having a little read through the Victorian Kitchen Garden book. Um, but it, it's really, really uh, heavy going. It's, it's, it's basically full on information um, that, that just sort of uh, basically says how they did it in the Victorian days. Um, and it's just literally wall to wall, page after page of really concise information. A little bit too dry for my, uh, my enjoyment. Um, but it was fascinating nonetheless, the fact that this book was actually signed by Harry Dodson. That was really cool because obviously he's dead now. And uh, so this is like a little, almost a little bit of history I've got in my hands here. And uh, that's really cool. And uh, she wants it back. So I've got to, uh, <laughs> I've got to take it around to her sometime soon. Some very interesting things happening in the news um, or one particular thing that caught my interest. Uh, if I say to you the words HD164595, you might know what I'm talking about. Uh, if not, um, we've received, or uh, the search for extraterrestrial people have received a really powerful signal uh, from space. And they're speculating that it could be possibly, possibly, it's all speculation and everybody's trying to figure out exactly what was going on. And there are suspicious circumstances around um, the fact it wasn't corroborate, collaborated or co corroborated, corroborated at the uh, at the time the signal was discovered. Um, but yeah, there was this, uh, you, you can see it, there's this huge rate spike that a really powerful signal, like a pulse that came from this uh, deep part of space um, from, uh, I think it was either a star or, or um, an area that was called HD164595. And um, yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. That's kind of the whole, and if you've ever, ever seen the Jodie Foster film, Contact, um, I thought that was a cracking film. I really enjoyed that. And the same sort of thing. She suddenly discovers this signal from space and uh, uh, sort of it all gets a bit uh, interesting after that. Um, but yeah, so I'm really interested to see whether that sort of evolves into anything. The thing is that what they're saying is the signal was sent like from, a, it would have been sent about 1922 and it will take us nearly 100 years to send one back. So um, <laughs> I'm not holding my breath at, uh, too much, but it, I, I did find it quite interesting. Um, the only thing is, the, it was discovered in Russia, and the idea is with the whole uh, SETI thing, or the search for extraterrestrials, is as soon as you spot a signal, you have to get in touch with other observatories around the world immediately so that they can then confirm it's a signal coming from where you say it is, and it's not some sort of a glitch. And that didn't happen in this case. And I think it was uh, there was a long time left between them actually discovering the signal and it being reported. So straight away there's a, a dampener on it, you know. But anyway, we kind of live in hope, um, or not, because I know um, Stephen Hawking um, seems to be under the impression that if there was intelligent life out there, it would come over and stamp us out um, uh, or wipe us out. Hopefully it won't. Um, but... Uh, like I say, if the signal took 100 years to arrive, I'm sure it won't be in, uh, in our lifetimes anyway. But interesting nonetheless. Now, while I was on the treadmill, I was listening um, to some music on my uh, little iPod and uh, I stumbled across um, an audio track that I'd made um, earlier this year. Now, this audio track is probably one of the best pieces of audio I've ever made. It's not music. Well, it is music, but it's uh, I do my my deep, um, you know, guided meditation voice, my, uh, my voiceover voice. And it's basically, it talks you through this fantasy story while you're running. And it was basically des designed to be used by runners. And it was actually a commissioned piece um, that I did. And it was to go with this collaboration album. We teamed up with about six other, or five other, there were six of us all together. 
um, uh, guided meditation gurus and artists um, and we made this album and it's on this album but I was reminded just how much I really enjoyed this this making this piece I mean it was really hard work. it's probably about the the, the hardest piece of, of work I've ever done um, regarding you know sort of audio um, productions um, but it, I still think to this date or to this day it's probably still the best one I've ever done and it's basically called Running with the Wolves Runner's Edition and it's it's nothing to do with the because we actually have have one uh, called Running with Wolves on the Honest Guys um, but it's absolutely nothing to do with that it's um, completely you know a completely new script completely new music and it's epic and you get it gives you goosebumps while you're running or while you're you know while you're going along on the treadmill because it makes you visualize that you're running beside or you've got these massive like fantasy epic wolves running alongside you and there's a whole pack of them and you're kind of gathering the pack and leading the pack um, and you've got this epic dramatic music and you've got the you know the voiceover talking you through it and telling you exactly what's happening and you've got all these wolves running with you and your set you, the setting is in this um you know sort of fantasy wilderness you've got eagles flying overhead leading the way it's just really goosebumpy and i really forgot how much i enjoyed listening to it even though it was kind of my own voice and my own work i'm normally very very self-critical of my own voice um, but this particular track, well, I put so much time and effort and, and work into it and heart into it. And uh, it's just really epic. And it's kind of, it's a little bit sad, a little bit, almost a little bit frustrating that I can't just put it out there for everyone to listen to because it's kind of locked into this album and uh, kind of at least for a year. And um, so, and uh, eventually, hopefully it may come out, um, you know, to the, to the wider public for free. But at the moment, it's just locked on this album. Um, but I, what I will do is I'll play at the end of this video. I'll play a, a little sampler of it, a little chunk of one of you know the more slightly more dramatic part in it, um, which well it's dramatic all the way through. But I'll play a little bit at the end so you kind of get a feel for what I'm talking about. But um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that on the treadmill um, the, today, and I, I might listen to that again tomorrow when I'm on there. Uh, I actually forgot about it, so it was really good to be reminded of it. Now I did make a little discovery um, about a week ago. I haven't made a video on it yet, but I've been experimenting um, with something called uh, mug meals or microwave mug meals. Now I know that sort of sounds a bit Franken foodish, um, but this is a whole little niche I've, I never knew existed until I stumbled across these videos on YouTube. And there are thousands and thousands of videos on uh, how to do this and it's basically you you do baking in a mug in the microwave so you can actually like bake cakes in a minute L literally within two minutes of getting the ingredients out of the cupboard and mixing them up in the mug you've literally got yourself a full-blown like muffin or a chocolate cake or a pizza um, or anything and it's it basically completely simplifies um, making cakes and as somebody kind of lives on their own it's perfect because then you just get the one portion rather than you know if you fancy a little slice of cake or something you generally have to go out and buy a big cake and then you kind of work your way through it and you get really fat but this if i fancy a cake now or a little bit of cake i can literally just mix up the ingredients straight away in a mug put it in the microwave and within literally within five minutes of starting um, I've got myself like a, a, a muffin or a, a lava cake or, or you know anything like that or a pizza and uh, so what I'm going to do I'm, I'm sort of when I first saw it I thought no that can't be right I, it just it can't be the same you know cooking it in the microwave um, but then I tried it I tried it with a little pizza you know you mix up the the flour and the water and the and the um to, to make the, the gooey dough and then you put the tomatoes on and then the the, the bits of cheese and everything uh, or whatever you want on the pizza stick it in the microwave for like a minute and i thought it, it, how can that work and i pulled it out and it worked it was actually a pizza in a cup and the and the the bread actually turned into, or you know the dough actually turned into bread there was you know air pockets in it and everything it was it looked just like pizza dough and um, I was a little bit blown away by it because it's it's not franken foods at all. You know exactly what ingredients are going in and you can make like a pizza fresh. 
um, in a few minutes and it's it's really good so hopefully I'm gonna um, I, the first one I did was a little bit watery I was still still trying to perfect it but when I've perfected it I'll uh, I'll make a video and uh, hopefully I can show you guys just how it works now I've got a little package here that arrived this morning and um, basically uh, for quite a while people have been going on at me about Rick Van Man mugs um, basically because I am into my tea or I love drinking tea and uh, I've had quite a few mentions in passing of people saying uh, I, I think it's quite often when I get the camcorder bandit mugs out which is an old channel I used to run years ago um, and uh, people say to me why uh, if you did a Rick Van Man mug I'd buy one and uh, so I sort of recently I looked into it I found a place online called Cafe Press and I think I've used them years and years ago and what you do is you send your logo to them and they'll then put it on whatever you want mugs t-shirts pens and all you know all sorts of things and literally as soon as you upload um, a logo they just offer you t-shirts and everything with that logo on um, personally I think they're a bit expensive and um, I don't think they're very good value for money the, the idea is that they they take care of everything if somebody orders a mug from you that they um, they'll post it direct to the customer that you know so you haven't got to get involved with sort of sending things in the post and stuff um, but I think they call it drop shipping or something like that um, and so basically it means that people can order stuff you know with your logo and brand if you want on it um, and they get sent. They've, I think they got a site in America and they got a site in England this one come from England obviously because I'm in England um, but there's also a site in America but I thought I actually set up uh, some Rick Van Man mugs and it threw in t-shirts and everything as well. Not, I don't think anybody wants a t-shirt. Personally, I think they're way too expensive. Um, I think I had to pay about £14 for a mug, which is a ridiculous amount of money. And the only markup I get is a pound. Or is it in, in America, it's like you get one dollar. I mean, you can, you can put whatever markup you want on them. Um, but personally, I think, oh, that's just too expensive. Um, but I put them out there for anybody who wants them. I actually make one dollar or one pound on every mug that I I sell because um, you know because I can. But I actually don't recommend buying them because I think personally I think they're too expensive. Um, but I went for the giant mug this time, so that <laughs> there we go. That's my Rick Van Man mug with the Rick Van Man logo on the back. So um, if anybody wants a Rick Van Man mug, they are available. I, personally, I think they're too expensive and I wouldn't buy one. I bought one just to test that they're okay. And actually, that looks fine. Um, I wanted to test basically that the logos were in, in the right place. So, and they are they're sort of square to the square to the handle. And they are, which is brilliant. Yeah, it's not the mugs that are really expensive. It's the shipping. Uh, it was £9 for the mug, but it was £5.50 for the shipping. Uh, and it was sent by Royal Mail, uh, 48 hour Royal Mail. So uh, it's the shipping that makes them expensive. So there we go, Rick Van Man mugs are available. I know this is not what I'm about. I, I'm not into selling merchandise, it's not my thing, but people did ask me to make them available. Uh, personally, I think they're way too expensive, but they're there if you want them. And uh, you know, so there we go. And I would make a terrible salesman, wouldn't I? I hate plugging stuff. I get embarrassed um, trying to sell stuff to people because it's just not what I'm about. Um, but there we go. Let's move on. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I just wanted to make this uh, personal video log and uh, say hello from Rickworld. And hopefully I'll make another video soon. I'm still a little bit busy at the moment. Um, but uh, hopefully I can uh, get some new material up uh, sooner rather than later. So anyway, I'll play that little segment, uh, Running with the Wolves, Runner's Edition, um, the little sample uh, in a minute, and uh, you'll get to hear exactly what I was talking about earlier in this video, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And I've started to go into my deeper <laughs> voice, just thinking about the... the um, the bit I'm going to play in a minute, it's made me want to go into my deeper voice, my uh, my voiceover voice. Now, I know some of you guys don't like that voice um, when I do my deep... <laughs> I can't do it now. I'm grinning too much. <clears throat> but when I do my voiceover voice, I know some people don't like it, but a lot of people do, and it's, it goes down really well on the other channel. 
So anyway, I'm going to stop waffling on now and uh, say thanks for watching, guys. Have a great rest of the day and uh, I will see you in the next video and enjoy this bit coming up right now. You plunge into woodland. The wolves are sleek shapes among the trees. You seem to feel a connection to each individual wolf as you run. The tang of the woods, pine, fallen leaves, is sweet and sharp as you flick through pools of sunlight and back into shadow. You feel alive in a way that you've never felt before. This is true freedom. To run effortlessly, your breath coming easily, your whole body tingling with a sense of power and presence. Your senses seem intensified allowing you to traverse the ground with the swiftness of a true athlete. You hear the flow of water, see the curving course of a river, perhaps the same one that cascaded down the mountainside Your path takes you alongside it. It is shallow, scattered with smooth boulders, clear as ice. Further along the river, you see three more wolves raise their heads from drinking and regard you intently. They lift their muzzles and howl, an acknowledgement of your pack, because you realize now that you are leading it, gathering the wolves to run. a lift to your stride as you run past them and you see them fall in beside you. Your whole being is saturated with energy. You can almost hear the heartbeats of the wolf pack, feel the stretch and roll of their muscles as you run as one entity, one mind, one heart, one spirit.